Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. In this video, we'll be finishing up our discussion of trusses, and we'll be exploring in particular uh, the method of matrix uh, truss analysis. In other words, uh, solving for all of the unknown member forces and reactions in a truss uh, using matrix methods using a spreadsheet software such as Excel. So uh, we'll be working through that in this lecture, and let's go ahead and begin. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is solving systems of equations. Just a very generic talk um, looking at systems of equations. So we're going to use a, a little bit of matrices here today. And so I want to just, uh, I'm not going to go through all of linear algebra, obviously. I just want to introduce just the barest bones of what we'll need uh, when solving a 2D truss uh, in, with a matrix in, say, Excel or other uh, spreadsheet software. Okay, so uh, let's think about uh, generic systems of solving systems of equations, or just a generic example of solving systems of equations. And what I mean by that is let's start with something, um, let's start with something very simple, like the simplest thing I can think of, which would just be like an X and Y equation. So think of an equation that doesn't represent anything to do with structural analysis that merely represents, say, um, uh, that merely represents, say, uh, well, whatever it wants to be. I'm just talking a general algebraic equation. So let's say you have the equation um, 2x minus 3y equals 5. And then, then maybe you have another equation, uh, 4x plus 5y equals 6. So it is obviously pretty trivial to solve for the solution of these two uh, equations, or in other words, where the two lines intersect. Not really too bad, fairly straightforward. You could solve this any number of ways. You could, you'd probably, I mean, I'd probably solve it using addition, or not addition, uh, simple substitution. Or you could solve them by multiplying the top equation by negative two, adding them together, et cetera. There are any number of methods you learn in introductory algebra that can be used to solve a system, uh, a simple system of equations uh, like this one. Okay. So let's say you have something like this. Now, so we could use algebraic techniques to solve this, but there is another method we could use to solve this, and that is to use a matrix. Okay, so what we could do is we could, we, it is possible to represent our variables here as a matrix, a matrix of coefficients. And if I were to do that, I would have something like this. I would have two, negative three, four, and five. And then I would multiply by a variable matrix, uh, a variable matrix which would be x and y here. Okay. And um, now I already have this in this form with all the constants, in this sort of standard form with all the constants on the right hand side. Uh, if I had started with a, uh, a system of equations like this, I guess that would be like a minus five over here. Uh, plus five y minus six equals zero. If I had started with, uh, with something like this, what I would need to do in order to solve using a matrix is that I would first need to put all of the constants on the uh, right hand side of the equation. So go from here to here by uh, moving all of the constants to the right hand side. On the left-hand side of our equation, we want, uh, if we're using matrices, generally what we want is all of our uh, variables on one side and our constants on another. So we have our coefficient matrix and we have a variable matrix. And as a review for matrix algebra, the way this, or matrix multiplication, the way this would work when you multiply it, is you would multiply uh, the two times the x to get two x, and you would multiply the negative three times the y to get negative three y, you'd multiply the four times the x to get four x and the five times the y to get five y. So in other words, this pair of matrices here is exactly equivalent to this uh, system of expressions here. And this would then equal a, another small matrix for our constants five and six. <clears throat> now, I wanna give these matrices a few names and I'm gonna call them as follows. So you'll have a matrix A, and matrix A is going to be our coefficient matrix. Then 
The coefficient matrix represents whatever coefficients we are applying to our variables. Then we'll have a matrix uh, capital X, which is our variable matrix. This represents all of the uh, unknowns in our equation. So in something like a truss, a unknown would be any kind of unknown. It would be anything we do not know at the start when solving a, solving a problem. Okay, so, um, so we have a variable matrix and we have a coefficient matrix. And finally, we're going to have, so this is capital X here. And then we'll have, uh, you know what, actually, so I can distinguish between these, I'll just put like a, some big brackets on my X or big bars on my X like that. Just to make clear that it's not the same as this variable X here. And then I would have a matrix B, and this would be my constant matrix. Now, um, one thing we can do is we can't, it's now, so if I want to solve for this, if I want to get, uh, if I want to solve the system of equations, ultimately what I'm looking for is the uh, solution to this equation. And also what I'm looking for in there is I am looking for um, a matrix that has, that is equal to my values X and Y. In other words, what I want is I want something that's like X, Y equals a matrix like this. It would be the same dimensions as X and Y. And it would just be something, you know, you'd have, I, ideally I would like something like this or something like this with just, you know, the value of X here and the value of Y here or the value of X here and the value of Y there. Okay, so let's think about this. So how do we get something like that? Well, um, the way we get something like that is that, okay, um, if we were doing this, if this was not a, a vector or a matrix equation, rather if this was simply a algebraic equation, we could say that uh, x is simply equal to, if we just had the equation, if we had the equation ax equals b, we could simply say that x equals b over a. So unfortunately with matrices, we can't do that as one just simple step. We instead have to do a little bit of matrix operations. And one property is that if you want to, in other words, we need to isolate the X uh, matrix, our variable matrix by itself. Now, um, one way to do that, or the primary way to do that, is to multiply by the inverse. And we'll designate the uh, inverse with this term, A to the negative one, that is the matrix inverse. Um, the inverse of our coefficient matrix. So, and, uh, and one property of the matrix inverse is that um, A inverse um, times A, well, these will simply uh, produce an identity matrix. And the identity matrix is basically the matrix algebra equivalent of one. So in a way, you can think of it as a... Uh, the A inverse times A, uh, they cancel each other out, and, or they per come to one, essentially. Um, one in the, or at least the matrix equivalent of one. So if you want to get the uh, variable matrix by itself, what we're basically doing, we have A, X, uh, equals B. So if we multiply both sides by the matrix inverse, then we'll have something like uh, this. Our A inverse and A will cancel out, and we'll be left with simply our variable matrix, like this, and this, this is simply going to be equal to A inverse times B. And this is what we're going to use as, and this is what we're going to apply to truss analysis. So, and this applies to any system of linear equations. And by linear equations, what I mean is, in this context, is really, in, okay, um, a linear, you know, when you are, if you're talking about a two-dimensional plane, um, you're used to linear equations being just X and Y from basic algebra. 
But as you probably know, you can have linear equations in any number of variables. You know, you could have 3w plus 5x plus 2y, you know, plus z equals 12 or something. This is a linear equation. It's just a linear equation in four-dimensional space, which is isn't that lovely? You can't, like, it's not really a, gra a system you can graph, obviously, but the key for a linear system is that each of the, the power on each of the variables is one. And you can use matrix algebra in any system that is uh, linear across all variables. And so, uh, so if we, if we think about something like the method of joints, however, all of what we've been doing so far with the method of joints and the method of sections Nowhere have we had like an x squared or a, an unknown squared. We've never taken a force squared or a reaction squared or anything like that. So everything we have done so far is linear, which means we can apply the principles of matrix math to the solving of to the solving of a uh, of a truss um, for all of its unknown forces and reactions. Okay, so. I know I just threw a lot at you. This is meant to be a very, very, very brief review of uh, matrix math. The key thing here is really this, that if we want, if we have a system of unknowns, if we have a system of equations with a, we have a coefficient matrix, a uh, variable matrix, and a constant matrix, and if we want to isolate the variable matrix, we simply multiply the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. And we do that using matrix multiplication. And this, I, I illustrated this with a simple two variable system, but this for applies regardless of the number of variables you're using in your system. You can have a thousand variables. You can have a, you can have a 1000 by 1000 matrix and the same math holds true. Okay, questions before we go to the computer. Okay, so I'm going to scoot over to the other room and uh, we will look at our example for today. Okay, you should all be able to see this truss right here. Now, I, need, I do need to, before I can actually analyze this, I'm going to have to apply um, some sort of loads on this. So let's make things interesting and put a couple loads on this, not just one or two, but it would be like four or something. So uh, let's put maybe, uh, that's a little too thick of a line. Uh, you'll notice I'm using only the finest high-tech uh, drafting software right now. Yes, this truss was created entirely in MS Paint. So, um, let's say we have a, oh, I don't know, maybe a, it's a little too big there. Let's put like a, oh, let's do a 10 kip force here. Well, no, I need more like that. And then I need a 10 kip force here. And then on a, oh, something similar maybe. Let's put another force and let's make this a, oh, I don't know, maybe a five kip force. And then um, maybe on both um, G and H, I'll put downward forces. And maybe I'll make those like 20 kips each. Again, only the finest high tech uh, drafting software here. So uh, 20 kip. Oh, not lip. I came in just not to make any typos. And a 20 kip force on H as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to see if this is uh, statically determinate. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, again, in order to see if it's statically determinate, we first need to determine whether we need to find our number of joints, our number of um, members, and reactions. So our number of uh, members, uh, or first all number of joints, I should say, would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So J is equal to ten. And before we go through all the trouble of setting up the matrix, we really should check to make sure that this is uh, statically determinate, because that would that would really be a really uh, bad day. 
Um, then um, let's see our, our number of reactions. Well, it's a simply supported truss. We have two reaction forces on E, one on J. So reaction is three. Then the number of members, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So M is 17. And so we can see that M, uh, that M plus R is indeed equal to 2J. So this is indeed a statically determinate truss. And the thing about matrix, uh, matrix methods like this is you need to have this exactly be true. In other words, if you have a, um, uh, you, can, you can do certain solutions, you can get certain, um, if you have a, uh, let's say you have a truss that has, uh, that is overly determined, like you have only 19 uh, M and R is there. You can, you can find some interesting information, some useful information by hand methods, but use, but if you have something like that, um, our, our matrix method will not work. Instead, we need some, we need a, um, instead you need to have something where the, uh, create a perfect square matrix where our M plus R is exactly equal to our 2J. And that's what we have here. And so I'm just gonna take this whole mess, copy it, and actually I'll probably just move that to the side. I'm gonna take this whole mess and copy this into Excel and we'll use this uh, as a reference as we move along. Okay, so I'm starting with a completely blank page here and I've just gone and pasted in my, um, um, I've just gone and pasted in my uh, uh, truss here. So what I need to do is I, I what I need to do is I need to create basically a twenty by twenty matrix um, reflecting um, uh, reflecting all of our unknowns and all of our um, all of our equations of equilibrium. So how I'm going to do this is that again we have twenty unknowns. We have 17 unknown member forces, and we have three unknown reactions. Each of those unknowns is going to be represented by a variable, and we have 20 equations of determining uh, that we can use to determine these values. And so uh, I'm going to set up my unknowns as columns in this matrix, and each of these equations is going to be a row in the matrix. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my unknowns. And let's think about what unknowns I have. Well, unknowns, the first ones I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have my reactions. So I'm going to have an EX and an EY. And in fact, you know, I might go ahead and even label those on here. Just to be clear what we're dealing with. Uh, and so we can um, reference this. I'll put my EX here the restraint force at X in the horizontal direction and my EY, like so. And then I'll have a uh, JY as well. So a JY. So let's copy this uh, increasingly chaotic diagram and put it back in our Excel sheet. And I am going to then write all of my uh, 20 unknowns as uh, columns in this matrix. Um, make, go ahead and make everything centered. Um, oh, always good practice to save it. That would be good. Uh, so I'll just throw this on the desktop for now. Good organizational practice, I know. Okay, and then JY. So those represent my um, those represent my uh, three unknown reaction forces. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, come up with variables for my uh, for all of my member forces. So first, going across the top, I'll have FAB, FBC, FCD. Uh, then I'll have FAE. I'll have FAF, FAF, uh, then I'll have FGA, FGA, 
So let's see, we have FAE, FAF, and FGA. Then we'll have FBC, or FBG, I should say, FBH, F, uh, let's see, FGH, no, not FGH, FBH, sorry. So we have FBG, FBH, FCH then, FCH, FCI, uh, FCI, FDI, and FDJ. Uh, FDJ. Then, um, okay, so let me just go, go, go ahead and double check this row. FAE, FAF, FGA, um, FBG, FBH, FCH, FCI, uh, FDI, and F. Uh, DJ. Then in the bottom chord we'll have FEF, F, uh, FG, uh, FEF, F, uh, FG, FGH, uh, FHI. Oh, I'm going to use capitals on my forces here for some level of consistency. Uh, so GH, FHI, and FIJ. And we should have 20 unknowns, and that's exactly now what we have. So that's good. Now, I also need 20 uh, rows, and these are going to represent, um, these will represent um, our equilibrium on each joint. So I'm going to have a X, I'll have a Y. Actually, let me, maybe I'll do this as, uh, I'm gonna insert a symbol. And I'm going to look for the Greek and get my capital sigma. Let's see for a nice summation. Where is my sigma? Sigma, where are you hiding? Uh, I hate it when they hide my sigmas from me. Oh, that's not right. Am I really just missing it? Let's see. Uh, that's not sigma. Where is my sigma? Oh, the wonders of Excel and Word. Okay. Ah, I know what to do. I'm in there, and I can always take the lazy approach. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Truly the best way to get a variable. Okay, so uh, sigma, uh, let's do sigma on joint A in the extraction. Oh, I wanted a capital. And sigma joint A in the Y direction. You know what, it's, I need to probably change these cell properties to, uh, let's do text. And then it'll start stop auto correcting. Uh, question. Okay. Uh, so now we just need uh, a rows for every one of our joints. And again, we're going to use this in constructing equilibrium um, about each joint. So I'll have a summation of B in the X and Y direction. Same on C and all the way through J. Okay, and all the way through. So D, E, etc. Sorry, if this is a bit tedious. It's just kind of the nature of the process. Oh, I was wondering why I had uh, some extra variables, none of var none of uh, rows in here. It helps if you don't duplicate a joint. Uh, let's see. So, 
estimation of forces in the y direction, et cetera. So we now have 20 rows, and these are going to, so again, our variables will correspond to our, um, our variables will correspond to uh, our unknowns. And we have 17, we have 20 altogether because we have seven, uh, 17 unknown member forces and we have three unknown reaction forces. And then each row is going to represent an equilibrium about a, um, is going to represent equilibrium about uh, the, uh, um, about a joint in that particular direction. So we have the summation of forces on joint A in the X direction, summation of forces on joint A in the Y direction, et cetera. Now, so my, in this space here, and I might actually just uh, put a border around this. Um, yeah, I'll put a nice, just big border on this. And this represents our coefficient matrix. So this is, uh, let's just make that capital even. This is A, our coefficient matrix. And then I also need to get matrix B, which is going to be, uh, I need to have some place to put matrix B, which is our constant matrix. And so I'm just going to do that with a, uh, you know, a, uh, just a single column here. And like this, oh, now I should probably make it the same, just for nice consistency. So if I do that properly, there we go. And this is going to be, uh, this will be B, our constant matrix. And then once we have this, we can get our variable matrix very easily. Oh, and actually maybe I could even, um, I'll kind of write this as set this up almost like a variable, almost like a, um, almost just like a matrix equation. And I will just paste the uh, transpose of this. Oh, did not mean to paste that there. Hmm. Come on, Excel, work with me here. Does not seem to want to let me um, close cells out. So I'm going to very quickly restart Excel. Isn't this lovely? Computers are oh so much fun. OK, so let's get that book one. OK, now I can select cells again. Isn't that lovely? OK, so I'm going to paste the uh, transpose here. And then put, and this is not really going to, I'm not gonna actually use this column in any kind of calculation. I'm just going to use this for uh, illustration purposes. But I will go ahead and put a border around it. And so we have our, uh, this would be X, our variable matrix or unknown matrix or whatever, whatever you wanna call it. And I could say, I could conceive of this as this times this equals our constant matrix. Oh. Yes, I just need to make this a, if I wanna do that, I need to make this a text cell and then just put an equal sign in there. there. Okay, so this matrix here, A, times this variable matrix is gonna be the constant matrix. Although in Excel, we can't just multiply variables. We instead have to use uh, the inverse to get the variable matrix, et cetera. Okay, so now I need to populate my matrix. And by default, everything, I'm gonna start by filling it with a bunch of zeros because anything, um, any equation, um, any equation for most of our cells here, we're gonna need zeros because for example, on joint A, we don't have any, um, on joint A, uh, the force DJ, for example, never appears. 
the forced member DJ is not present on in an equilibrium on joint A. So uh, we'll have zero, we'll have, we need a coefficient of zero on DJ uh, for um, in an equilibrium on joint A. So I'm just going to start by populating the entire thing with zeros. And I'll just paste some numbers in there. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out uh, I need to figure out uh, coefficients um, that will apply uh, that I can multiply um, in any given equilibrium that I, in any given horizontal or vertical equilibrium that will uh, represent the equations of equilibrium um, in a particular row. And before I do that, I think I will go and um, create some slope triangles on here. Well, maybe not create some slope triangles, but at least uh, note the uh, the lengths of these. So if I have 16 and 16, well, on here, this is going to be the square root of, what will that be? On that diagonal, this diagonal will be the square root of six, 2 times 16 squared. That's that. And so we'll be able to use that in our We'll be able to use, so that, that that represents the length of this diagonal here. Uh, and then the rest of the, the diagonals, there are they are all 12 feet long. And since they're they're all 12 feet uh, wide or 12 feet in the horizontal direction and 16 feet in the vertical direction. So those look a lot to me like three, four, five triangles. So all of the other diagonals are uh, 20 feet long. And I'm just going to use these in the creation of our um, in the creation of our uh, coefficients when we're working with any of the uh, any of the diagonals or the forces in any of the diagonals. Okay, so I'm going to take this whole mess now and replace this. Okay, so we have this. I'm just going to put this down here so we can reference it. First of all, I want to do, uh, e let's do equilibrium, let's write some equations for joint A. And the first thing I want to uh, look at is joint A in the X direction. Now, imagine I wanted to write the equilibrium equation for joint A in the X direction. Oh, I should, you know, I'm also gonna populate our constant matrix with zeros starting out with. Populate that with zeros. So joint A in the X direction, um, I will have, and again, I'm going to start by, I'm going to assume everything is in, ten in tension. So all forces are moving away from joints. And then if I get a negative, I will simply have compression. So uh, joint A here, um, let's consider for, uh, I will not have any of the reactions, uh, any of the EX or EY applying a reaction force to joint A. So the first thing I need to consider is FAB. Well, FAB is going to be, uh, if I want to get a, the, the effect of FAB on joint A, if I isolate that joint and apply the method of joints, I simply need a coefficient of one because it is applying a horizontal force uh, on joint A equal to the magnitude of FAB and it's in the positive direction. Then uh, our next one, we could look at FAE. Uh, FAE is going to be in the negative horizontal direction, but I need to multiply by a, uh, a certain, uh, a certain uh, factor to get the horizontal component. And that's going to be the ratio of lengths, negative 16 times the square root of two times 16 uh, squared, two times 16 squared, like so or that factor here, r squared two factor. And that again is the factor that I'll need to multiply uh, the force in member AE, FAE by, to get its horizontal uh, force effect on joint A. Then I'll have FAF, which is vertical, so it has no effect on e the equilibrium joint A. Then I'll have FGA. And that is going to be, uh, that's going to be in the positive direc uh, direction on joint A. And that is going to be, uh, I need to find the component of that, horizontal component of that. And to do that, I simply multiply by, uh, I multiply FAG by uh, 12 over 20, 
or a coefficient of 0.6. All right, and those are the only four forces, at, or actually only three forces that are acting on joint A in the horizontal direction. So we now have one of our equations of equilibrium. Can you show the equation for FAE again, briefly, please? Oh, sure. Okay, so the question is, uh, can we get the equation for FAE again? Okay, so if we look at FAE, um, let me set this up like this. So if we have a triangle, um, we have a triangle that is 16 squared, or not 17 squared, uh, that is 16 feet wide and 16 Wait, feet I understand tall. now. It's just that it was both the length and height are 16. I was confused. Oh, okay. We're sorry good, we're that. good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, sorry, guys. The, the, uh, I was just walking from the very beginning. But um, yeah, the length and height are both 16. So yes, that is how you get that. It's just the square root of that. And then to get the, uh, to get the uh, component of this, you just multiply by the ratio to the horizontal component, we multiply, we put it in the negative direction and multiply by the horizontal component over the length, uh, which would be equal to also just uh, uh, root two over two is another way to think of that, or one over root two. Okay, so next we want to look at joint A in the vertical direction, in the Y direction. And so uh, again, everything moving away. So I'm going to have uh, nothing on the reaction forces. Um, AE is actually going to have the same factor because it's in it's it's uh, it is the same factor. It's it is a uh, a equal leg isosceles right triangle, and so we can just copy that there. Uh, FAF will just have a factor of negative one because it's pointing just straight down, and then FGA is we multiply by the ratio of the height to the length, and that would be just. Uh, negative four fifths or negative 0 0.8. And those are simply, and those will, and that is our, all, all of our vertical coefficients uh, for joint uh, A. So there's only one other thing we need to put on joint A. And that is, uh, we have this horizontal force on joint A, or an external horizontal force. Now, if we were applying, if we were uh, doing just a summation of forces, um, I would have a plus five kips applied to this joint. However, what I've really done in creating this constant matrix is move it to the other side of the equation. So even though this horizontal force is in the positive X direction, I need to invert its sign because I'm moving it to the other side of the equation. So I'll have a negative five in the, uh, on, in the row for joint A in the horizontal direction in my constant matrix. Again, it, uh, as it's actually applied to the joint, it is in the positive X direction, but I need to flip it around and make it a negative, but when I move it to the other side of the equation with our constant matrix here. Okay, next we can move on to joint B. And uh, so let's see, we'll have FAB with a factor of negative one and FBC with a factor of positive one. And then um, we will have a factor on FBH, it looks like, of 0 0.6 or 3 over 5. So that is FBH with, uh, over here of 0 0.6. And that's it for horizontal equilibrium on joint B. And we have no external forces, so we're good there. Then joint B in the Y direction, we will have only two forces we'll have uh, only two unknowns, I should say. We'll have FBG uh, pointing directly downward at negative one. And we'll have a, uh, we have to uh, we'll have, need something for FBH of negative uh, four fifths in the Y direction there. And we have no external forces on joint B, so we are done with that row. Uh, so now it's just a matter of, keep pl of uh, plugging and chugging through these. F, uh, Let's see, for joint C in the horizontal direction, we'll have negative one on FBC. And then on FCD, we'll have positive one. Then on FCI, we will have, uh, that will be a uh, positive, um, that will be three fifths or 0 
FCI in the horizontal direction. And so uh, we have no horizontal for external forces on uh, joint C. So that should wrap up the horizontal equilibrium of joint C. Then we move to the vertical. We'll have again just two. And we'll have uh, FCH should have a factor of negative one in the vertical on joint C. And then FCI should have a factor of negative 0 0.8 as shown here. And again, that's the ratio of 16 over 20, but then just in the negative Y direction. So we finished up with joint C. We can move on to joint D. Uh, joint D on FCD. I know I'm going through this kind of quickly, but this will be posted on Canvas. Um, so FCD, uh, let's see, in the X, so on joint D in the X direction, we have a negative uh, one on FCD, a coefficient of negative one, and then we need FDJ. And that will be a factor that will be a positive coefficient. And we just need to multiply by our 12 over 20 or just our 0 0.6 there. Um, to get that, and that is the factor to get FDJ in the uh, horizontal equilibrium equation of joint D. And we'll, we, we need just two of them there, so that should be good. Then uh, DY, we're going to have uh, two things again. We'll first need FDI, uh, and there will need a factor of negative one. And FDJ will have a factor of negative uh, four fifths. And both of them negative because we're assuming tension and they're pointing downward from the perspective of joint D. Then joint E. So uh, for the first time, we're actually going to have reactions. And uh, I need a factor of uh, positive one on EX. Then um, F, let's see, I need, to, I need to have FAE. And that will have a factor of uh, that will be pointing in the positive x direction. So I'm going to have a factor of equal to one over the square root of two. I can type properly. Like so, one over square root of two. Uh, like this. And then um, I will also have a factor of uh, one on FEF. Uh, let's see, and that should be everything. We should have uh, in the horizontal direction on joint F, we should have just those uh, three things. We have a, a, a factor of one on our reaction force. We have a one over root two on FAE, because that's a 45 degree angle. And we have a positive one on um, FEF because it is pointing in the horizontal X direction. Then the Y, I need a factor of one on the vertical reaction. Uh, then on FAE, I need the same factor, one over root two, and it's pointing upward, so it's positive. And that is everything I need on joint E in the uh, vertical direction. Next, let's move on to joint F in the horizontal direction. And this can be relatively straightforward. Uh, so FEF, I'll simply have a factor of negative one. So that is pointing away, because again, we're assuming tension for everything. So that will be pointing to the left on, um, uh, so FEF will be pointing to the left from the perspective of joint F. And then FFG will have a factor of positive one by the same, um, by the same logic. Uh, FF, the summation, no, so then we can move on to the summation of forces on joint F in the Y direction. And that's just going to be, uh, the only thing I'll have there is FAF, and that's just positive one because it will be pointing upward. Then um, I can move on to FG or FGX or just the summation of forces on joint G in the X direction. Uh, I will have a negative one on FFG and a positive one on FGH. Uh, they're pointing both horizontally in the negative and positive directions respectively. But then I do need something for FGA and that's going to be uh, negative because it's pointing in the uh, it's pointing in the negative horizontal direction from the point of view from the point of view of F, of, of, a, of a point G, and we need to get the, its component, and that's just uh, three over five, so negative zero point six, and that should be everything on joint G in the x direction. 
Then the y direction. We will have FGA again, and at this point, this is going to be pointing upward with a ratio of 0 0.8 to get the vertical component. Then FBG, I'll have just a coefficient, a positive one, because it's pointing directly upward. And then I need, it's, I need something for the external force. And just like last time, even though this is pointing downward, and so you would think it would be a negative, but when you move to the other side of the equation, it becomes a positive 20. Uh, it, we are pulling at, we are applying a 20 get force in the downward direction, but it is applied, uh, uh, it is positive applied in the negative X or in the negative Y direction, but we have to move it to the other side of the equation so into our constant matrix. And that is why we have a positive 20. And so uh, GY, uh, we have again, a, a, a 0.8 on, uh, on GA there, and then a positive one on FBG. And that should be everything we need for uh, G. Okay, Move on, moving on to joint H, it's gonna be very similar. On uh, member BH, we will have a negative, a factor of negative 0 0.6 in the X direction to get the uh, horizontal component. And then um, F, uh, member GH, on member GH we'll have a factor of negative one and HI positive one. And that's everything in the horizontal direction on joint uh, H. Then in the Y direction on BH, we will have, uh, let's see, where is BH? We will have a factor of positive um, 0 0.8 for the vertical component. And then FCH will have a factor of positive one. And now, just like last time, we'll have uh, that 20 kit force will be, gener will be generating a positive force, uh, will, be, will be generating a negative force, but will become a positive when you move it to the other side of the equation. Then joint I, uh, we will have, let's see, um, first of all, FCI, and I think that wraps up uh, joint H in the Y direction, uh, yeah. So joint I, we should have three things in the X, we'll have CI, um, and that will be uh, in the X direction, that will be negative. So negative uh, 0 0.6 to get the horizontal component. Uh, negative FHI, or F -I, uh, so that will be negative one. And IJ at a factor of positive one, and that wraps up joint I in the, uh, y dire or in the X direction. Then in the Y direction, we'll have FCI again, this time with a factor of positive 0 0.8 and FDI with a factor of positive one. And finally, you'll have joint J, and JY will have a factor of positive one, because we want to include that unknown on that joint's equilibrium. Oh, actually, that not yet, that's on the Y. Uh, in the X, then, we're only going to have a uh, member IJ with a factor of negative one, and DJ, uh, let's see, where is DJ? There you are. With a factor of negative 0 0.6 because it's in the negative direction in the X and also uh, in its horizontal. Um, so we have our uh, ratio of our slopes to get 0 0.6. And I know I'm going through this relatively quickly, rather quickly, but I'm trying to cram it within a class period. Okay. And then finally, JY, we do have a factor of. Um, of one on our J uh, force. And then we have DJ, which will have a factor of, of positive. Um, that is going to be, uh, let's see, that is going to be just 0 0.8. Okay, so this whole thing is now our coefficient matrix. So we have our truss here. And uh, one thing I noticed on this was I didn't have the 10 kip force, this uh, horizontal 10 kip force on joint D. And I went ahead and added that to the, uh, to the row on, the, on uh, D's uh, uh, summation of forces in the horizontal direction. So this 10 kip force here, um, that wasn't uh, included in, uh, I didn't have that, I missed that when we were working through it on uh, Wednesday. So I've gone and added that added that back in. Okay, so with that, we should have all of our member forces and we're, we're, we should have all of our um, coefficient matrix and our constant matrix set up. 
And now all that's left to do is to um, is to find our uh, variables, our unknowns. And the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, create a uh, I'm going to create a inverse matrix. So let's see. So I want uh, 20 rows for this. And I'm going to say this whole, I'm going to select an area and say M inverse. And I'm going to select the entire uh, coefficient uh, matrix A. So I have, I'm using the M inverse command for a matrix inverse. And then if you're not familiar uh, with Excel and matrices, um, I'm going to type control shift enter rather than just enter to define this across the entire uh, uh, field here. So again, I select an area that is, if I want to take the coefficient, if I want to, sorry, if I wish to take the inverse of my coefficient matrix, I select an area that is equal in air, I select a range of cells that is equal in dimensions to my original coefficient matrix here. And I use the M inverse command and apply it across the entire thing. Okay. So then all that remains is to multiply, uh, as you may recall, um, in order to get the, uh, our variable matrix, we will multiply the inverse of our coefficient matrix times our constant matrix B. In other words, X is equal to A inverse B. So um, I'm just going to select an area that is of uh, the same dimensions as our uh, coefficient matrix, or as our uh, variable matrix here. And I'm going to do a matrix multiplication, M mult, of our inverse matrix and our constant matrix here. And as before, I'm going to apply the, uh, I'm going to apply this over a range of cells by doing control shift enter rather than simply enter. And in doing this, I now have produced the uh, values for the actual overall um, unknowns in every one of, of our uh, members. So notice what I now have. I know that EX, our uh, restraining force in the horizontal direction on joint E, is equal to negative 15 kips or 15 kips to the left. I know that the vertical force on J is uh, 25 kips upward. And I can also see that, um, let's see, FAB is negative, FBC is negative, FCD is negative. So our top chord is in compression and our bottom chord here, let's see, EF, uh, FEF, where are you hiding? Yep, FEF, uh, FFG, FGH, and FHI, and FIJ, all of these are in tension. So our bottom chord is in tension. So our top chord is in compression, our bottom chord is in tension. And that is exactly what we would expect for uh, typical trust behavior uh, if we're dealing with a positive bending scenario. Okay, and that is the basic method of applying um, uh, Excel and spreadsheets and matrices to solve for unknown uh, trust member forces and unknown reactions. Essentially what we do is we just create a, uh, we create a matrix where each of the rows represents equilibrium about a, a single joint. So again, each row is equilibrium, uh, either X or Y equilibrium about a single joint. And uh, as long as we have a trust that the number of members plus the number of reactions is equal to twice the number of joints. In other words, if we have a determinant and stable trust so that M plus R is equal to 2J, uh, we will end up with a nice square matrix and we will be able to solve for all of our unknown uh, member forces by simply taking the matrix inverse and multiplying it by our uh, constant matrix. All right, that'll do it for today. All right, that'll do it for today. So uh, as again, we have uh, applied here the methods of trust analysis, specifically the method of joints. Uh, but using matrix methods to solve all of our 20 unknown, um, for all of our 20 unknown member forces and reactions, using 20 uh, equations of equilibrium across the, uh, across each joint in the truss. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, uh, regardless, hope you found this video a little bit useful or enjoyable or perhaps a bit informative. 
Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to keep the robots happy. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. So uh, I hope you found this interesting or useful in your work. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next lecture. And as always, thank you.